So welcome all to the Sequoias here. Uh, NCPHS uh, is a provider of senior housing and senior services throughout the Bay Area, Northern California. Our trade area is really from uh, the South Bay all the way up through Mendocino. And we know the silver tsunami is coming, and we, at this point, are really focusing on Northern California. Um, our core purpose at NCPHS is to enrich the experience of aging. And if you think about how simple that is, um, it is really powerful in that we try to instill that every day and everything we do is all about enriching the experience of aging. Whether you are living in our independent, affordable living communities, whether you're living in one of our CCRCs like this, whether you're living or attending one of our senior centers, it's all about enriching the experience of aging. And the NCPHS advantage over the years has really been, and we've been in business 55, over 55 years now, and the NCPHS advantage has really been our service. And the question that we're facing as we look forward is how does that change with technology? How do we utilize technology to enhance our service and not replace our service? And what I'm going to quickly do before I get into some of those is just talk to you about what our business model is and who are we and then where do we think we're going. Um, first of all, you are standing in um, one of four of our business models. Um, this Sequoia is, is a CCRC, it's a Continuing Care Retirement Community, and that's one of our business models, and I'll talk about that in a minute. A second one is our affordable portfolio. So we have about an equal number of affordable housing units and these market rate CCRCs. And then we have a third business model, which is our community services and our foundation. And then the fourth is our senior centers. We have affiliated with two, the San Francisco senior centers that have two senior centers in San Francisco. On the continuing care model, the Sequoia is like this, we have three of these communities in Northern California. And people move in independently, they pay a big fee up front, anywhere from 150000 to a million dollars, and they're taken care of for the rest of their life, and they have access to higher levels of care should they need that care um, in their community here. They never have to leave this community. We've got memory care, assisted living, skilled nursing, and often they can access services even in their own um, units or, or elsewhere in the community, such as health centers and other ways to keep people living independently longer. And what people really move here for is community. And that community, that service that we provide is really what attracts people to a community like the Sequoias. And we have one in Portola Valley and one in Marin. Um, the affordable housing model is with three towers, two in San Francisco and one down in uh, San Jose. And the affordable towers are really serving a population that pays no more than 30% of their income in rent. And that's a very low income population. And those folks, really HUD, who funds the difference between what it costs to operate them and that 30% that they pay, HUD says, oh, no, no, you can't provide services. This is a housing program, and we're going to limit your subsidy to only housing. So then we have our foundation that goes out and raises money, and we provide them services so those folks can live independently, because they don't have the access uh, to services that we can provide in a market rate building like this. And that ties into our community service programs. So we have four community service programs, Coming of Age. And Coming of Age is a program where older adults are um, either paid or it's unpaid work. And they utilize their tremendous talents that they've gained over their years of employment um, to strengthen the nonprofit and public sector. And the Coming of Age program um, operates throughout the Bay Area. The Experience Corps is another program. And Experience Corps is a program where we have elders that mentor Marin, and specifically it's Marin County. Marin uh, elementary students, most often these are uh, English as a second language students who are struggling with literacy. Our third program is the Well Elder Program. And this is really to transition people who are coming from hospitals and things into, um, back to their homes. Um, we have affordable housing communities that I described earlier where people don't have a comprehensive service program like we do here, and the Well Elder Program makes sure they're connected to existing services already in the community. And then we've got our living at home, and the living at home is really to strengthen people who aren't living in either in one of our affordable communities or living at a CCRC like this, 
but actually staying at home and we want to make sure that they have access to support and services really around mental health and um, just general um, health issues to allow them to live independently. So those, that's our existing business model. And, and then our senior centers, sorry, I forgot about our senior centers. So the senior centers are really a place where people can come for community, the same way people move here for community. They come to those senior centers for, com for community. We have lifelong learning programs, um, social and community activities, and it's really um, a place that people call a second home. Uh, I referred earlier to the NCPHS advantage of really being service, and that for 55 years we've developed that service model, and that's what we're all about. And our strategic plan moving forward, like I said earlier, the silver tsunami is coming. We know that train is coming into the station demographically. We've all been watching it and tracking it. Yet, when that train starts to unload, there aren't enough communities like this. There aren't enough of our affordable housing communities. There aren't enough of our senior centers. And I think we, we are prepared, and one of my responsibilities here at NCPHS is our growth strategy. How do we develop more communities to accommodate people at every income level and wherever they're at? But also, how do we utilize existing technology? And how do we allow people to live independently in their homes so they don't have to rely on other communities if they're able to and if they choose to? So we have a strategic planning process that we engage in every five years. We've just updated our last strategic plan um, in January. It was a year-long process where we did our internal and external assessments and we scanned everything and focus groups. And I know there's a couple people in these rooms that have been in our focus groups. And we then came up with a strategic plan. And two of our goals in that strategic plan are technology-driven. And those two are, the first one is to utilize technology to reduce costs and enhance operations. And we often identify ourselves and we know we're doing things old school. But that transition, um, especially when we consider the user, and that end user might be our residents, it might, we have to be very careful about how we consider technology. So we're old school, we're a 55 year old company, we don't have a lot of startup energy talent and we're really relying on our service model and we're not going to abandon our service model to embrace new technology unless we know that it's it's really going to benefit us in the long run so from that perspective we're very conservative the second um, goal of that's technology related in our strategic plan is to explore innovative options for in-home care to expand consumer choice and enhance resident service quality and that's again do we do a ccrc without walls can't we utilize some of the services we provide within this structure and take it outside the walls? This is not a new concept. Our industry has been thinking about this for years. And yet, we have, we're faced with regulatory restrictions, we're faced with liability issues. And sure, technology seems to be an easy way to deal with that, but then when you consider the ramifications of, well, how do you respond to that? And how do you, it makes it all very complicated, but we're working on it. And um, where we're working on it is in the infancy stage. And so I'll admit, we are not the most forward technology thinking, uh, um, early adapter organization. But we are thinking about it and we are looking for ways to um, integrate technology and to embrace technology as we move forward with these challenges, especially in this next 10 years where we're looking at growth as a tremendous opportunity and a need. Um, we, I think one word that we've learned about technology and enhancing our services, and one word that we struggle with, is change. And older adults typically don't like change. Now that doesn't mean that we don't have early adapters among our residents. It doesn't mean that our residents are all the same. But by nature, um, they just aren't embracing change. It's, it's not like the little 10-year-old that runs in front of an iPad and just loves and the brain is just absorbing it. We've learned ways to do things and now this is a different way to do things. So we encourage you to think about the end user. And the end user, and I'll give you an example of where we really didn't think this through as well as we could have or maybe we did and it just happened the way it did. But many, many of you might have ridden our elevators here tonight. And we adapted 
or, or we enhanced, at least that was the intent, um, to improve efficiency with our elevators. And many of you have probably seen these elevator systems where it actually, if you punch in the number on the keyboard, the brain is thinking about how many people are in there and it knows whether you have a walker or whether you have a wheelchair. And it says this is the capacity of that elevator and now it's full and therefore it's not gonna stop at all these other floors. And that's really gonna save a lot of time because otherwise the elevator is going to the top and by the 17th floor it's full and yet it's stopping at all these other floors and the residents are yelling, it's full, it's full. <laughs> and it doesn't work. And you've got people waiting and they're frustrated and you're trying to empty the whole building out at lunchtime, you're trying to empty the whole building out at dinner. And it's the same in any office buildings. You've seen office buildings adapt this technology. We certainly weren't new adapters of technology. This was a proven technology. So we embraced it and we said, yes, we need to do this and it's going to increase efficiency and it's going to reduce costs. It's going to do our little tests of technology. Well, we have the ground floor and we have our atrium level, which you're at here, and then we have our basement level, but for some reason, whether it's state codes, there's all sorts of reasons why, it's now zero, negative one, and negative two. And so the resident doesn't know where they are, the resident doesn't understand this pushing thing. Where we engaged the residents in this was at the training level, because this has been done all over the place before. This isn't new technology. And the residents were brought into this room to take a demonstration and training, and it was an absolute disaster. And what happened was, this just happened to coincide with the time where Occupy movement was happening. And we even had a movement to Occupy the home office, the corporate office. <laughs> And it was a frustrating experience, and we still have not resolved this, and we still have to figure out how that might be improved. And yet, we have some residents that you ask them, how are the elevators? And they'll say, oh, they're fine, they're great, and others will just cringe at the whole thought of the thing. So I think I just want to leave you with um, thinking about that end user. Our end user at that time when we thought through this process was our engineering department that was responsible for the capital upgrades in the elevator. And we really thought this was a technology that's already in place and everybody can figure out how to use it and it's just a matter of education. And we were wrong. It's not intuitive for our residents. It's not intuitive for many of us. And that's something that I want to leave with you. And I think it's great that you're sitting here in these communities coming out and getting to know the users. And we have to ask that of ourselves. So when you consider your new technologies, who is it? Is it us, the provider, that's going to be using this technology? Is it the resident that's using the technology? Is it our engineers? And all of those things, I think, need to drive how we contemplate um, bringing it actually into the field. And whether it is here in one of our communities, whether it is outside our walls, delivering services into somebody's home, um, we welcome your ideas and bringing that technology to us. We're building capacity within our business development function to try to address this moving forward and to try to help us think through this. While we're still committed to service and we're still committed, and we're probably going to be a little less enthusiastic um, and a little more cautious, especially after our elevator experience, to embrace new technology, but we're going there. And we know that we're just in the infancy stage and we rely on people like you. Um, in our audience tonight, uh, Stacy, I'm not sure where Stacy and Candice are in our marketing department, but they, um, with Donna and Katie, brought you guys all in here, and I think it's great. We really appreciate that. Our CEO, Barbara Hood, couldn't be here tonight. She thought this was a great idea. We're struggling, as I said, we're in our infancy stage, on how to even get our leadership team around technology and how not to spend all our time on this topic. How do we still do our day jobs? How do we still move ahead and how do we create strategic partnerships without getting sucked into this whole world that we don't know where it's taking us? So I, I encourage you to hook up with uh, Steve Heger, our IT guy is here tonight. Steve, raise your hand. There, he doesn't want to raise his hand. There's more work for him and all of us. Um, we encourage you to contact Stacy, contact Steve, and let us know um, how we might be able to work with you in the future. Thank you.